Oh, praise God. It sure feels good to be outside for a change. Um, hadn't really been outside for any length of time since last Sunday evening. Um, came home and uh, began to burn up with a fever. And, and by Monday evening, my doc said, you got the flu. <laughs> I've had the flu a bunch of times in my 50 years on this earth, uh, but never <clears throat> at the level of seriousness that uh, this time turned out to be. Uh, put me in the bed and the couch for five days, ran a temperature, literally probably four days. And, uh, and I know there's many of you dealing with this at this time i mean it's it's everywhere it's just part of life and living and uh but thank god he's created our bodies the way he has man my my fever would be going up but at the same time i was understanding man this is god's built-in defense from my immune system because this virus can't live in temperature that's raised above the normal body temperature so even though I was trying to control the temperature, I never wanted it to go all the way away, even though it would make me feel so bad. I've never been so cold in my life, even when it weren't cold. And uh, I've lost weight. I, I still can't eat nothing but pumpkin pie with some, you know, Cool Whip on top of it because everything I eat is bitter and I don't even really have an appetite still. And it's been six days now. And, and uh, I've not run a fever in over 24 hours. Praise God for that. So I know the bug's been destroyed and by my God and by the way he's designed our immune systems to fight it. And uh, so I woke up in a sweat uh, a couple nights ago. And since then, the fever's been gone. So give God praise for that. But we're going to be praying for others of you that are fighting this at the same time. You, you know, some of you are going to watch this. And I know you're dealing with with this you know influenza this is that season i mean i mean i far back as i can remember growing up i mean it's just it just seems like my lifetime just always been around last year i had it this time last year in uh 2022 and uh but it weren't nothing like this i've had the flu a bunch of times where i never even run a fever never even slowed me down really but uh, there was a couple times I was about to go check myself into the hospital. Uh, that's how rough it got. So, uh, but I wanted to bring this short word to you and pray for you in faith and believe God to heal you. And, uh, cause he is our healer. Exodus 15 and 26, he said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And we don't just claim him as healer for, you know, certain illnesses and diseases that we think's real big or too impossible or incurable. No, we even pray and believe him to heal us of even those things we know that are curable or that are endurable. And if we'll endure them, then the cure comes through the endure. And uh, sometimes we limit God on those lesser, you know, uh, sicknesses because we think, well, we can treat it. We can do something for it. And uh, But, you know, there's not even an antibiotic they can give to you for this flu. I don't, I don't know what that's all about. I think the flu's done figured out all the antibiotics anyhow. But thank God for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. There was one night I was so sick. Temperature was 104. I was shaking uncontrollably. And I made myself stand up. And when I did, the Holy Spirit started praying in me through tongues. And I promise you immediately, amen, the shivering stopped. And in two hours, my temperature come all the way down to 98 and that was the only time during those five days that it actually dropped that way god gave me relief for a little while and then the fever started coming back probably three hours later but it never got to that point again and so i give god praise for that so uh, i know the holy spirit's involved so but i want to give you this word in job 2 verses 7 it says that satan went forth from the presence of the lord and he smote job with sore bulls from his feet to his crown or the crown of his head. So it says Satan did this. So I just want to declare today, Satan is the one that brings sickness. It's because of him. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is not the one making people sick. So when you want to blame someone for sickness, blame the devil. 
All right, Job 2, 7. Job's the oldest book in the Bible. Satan's the one that smoked Job. Now, God, did God permit it? Yeah, but God's also the one that restored twice as much to Job as he had lost in Job 42, 10. So God's the one that healed Job. So in the book of Job, Satan is the one that made Job sick. And before the book's over with, God's the one that makes him whole and restores him. So let's get this straight. Satan's the one that makes people sick. Jesus is the one that heals sickness. Amen. All through the Bible, God's the healer. He's the one healing people. The devil's the one making people sick. I'll prove it to you. Jesus spit on sickness. Don't worry, this is on film. I ain't going to spit on you. Boy, that's gross, Brother Marvin. Yeah, it is, ain't it? But Jesus spit on sickness. Why did he do this? In Mark 7, verses, I believe it's uh, 31 through 35, Jesus takes a man that's deaf, impediment in his speech, his tongue, so to speak, is hanging out, the string of his tongue, making his tongue just hang out. Jesus takes him aside because people brought him to Jesus to pray for him. And Jesus took him aside away from the people. It says he spit. What's that mean? I don't know if it meant he spit in his hand or whatever, but he spit and he used his spittle. And he touched that man's ears and tongue. And when he did, the man's tongue, string of his tongue, was loose, snapped back up in his mouth. He was able to speak and his ears were opened and he healed. He was healed by Jesus. This is how Jesus did it. All right. In Mark chapter 8, verses 22 through 25, there was a blind man that was brought to Jesus. And Jesus took him apart from all the people, spit in his eyes. Can you imagine that? Spit in the blind man's eyes and prayed for him. And when he prayed for him, he asked him, could he see? And the man said, blurry. You know, he, he described blurry vision. He said, I see men walking like trees. He knew it was men, so he was seeing people. He knew that was people, but he was real blurry. That's why he said like trees. All right, so Jesus prayed for him again, and his eyes was completely restored to 2020. Jesus spit on these two people and healed them. In John chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, Jesus spit in a blind man's eyes after making, you know, clay with his spittle, same as saying he spit in his eyes, spit in the mud and, and rubbed it in his eyes and told him to go to the pool of Siloam, which by interpretation is sent. And when he came back, he was seeing. So three examples there. Jesus spit on sickness. Why? Why did Jesus spit on sickness? Because in that culture, and most likely this one as well, when someone is disgusted with something, they spit on it. Back then, they would spit on something or even spit on people if they were disgusted about them. That's why Jesus, it said about him in Isaiah 50, verses 6, he despised, you know, the spitting. The spitting. They spit on him when they crucified Jesus. They despised him. They hated him. So, you know, you think about it. He gave us back to the smiters. And those that plucked out his hair from his face, he despised not the shame nor the spitting. Amen. So they were disgusted with Jesus, despised with him, spitting on him while he was on the cross. But we see Jesus spitting, not on people, but spitting on the sickness that had the people and they were being healed. Why was Jesus doing that? He was forever telling us, I'm not the one that makes you sick. I spit on sickness. I'm disgusted with disease. I'm your healer, not the one that makes you sick. If you want to blame anybody for the sickness, blame the devil. Hallelujah. Rebuke the devil. Attack the devil in the name of Jesus. He's the one that makes people sick. Jesus is our healer. Jesus spit on all sickness, forever telling us, I'm disgusted with it. It's not for me. I didn't make you this way. I didn't give this to you. I'm the one that said in Matthew 8, 17, Jesus said himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. He said, I took it and I bore it. So when all those people were spitting on Jesus, they were spitting on sickness too. Because Jesus said, I so despise sickness and disease and want my people healed. 
that I took all their diseases and sicknesses that was, is, and will be. Even the sickness that's in many of your bodies right now, including that old flu virus. He took it in his body. He spit on it. Somebody, when you get through watching this video, you ought to go to your sink and say, I spit on sickness in the name of Jesus. And I believe God to heal my body right now from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. And Lord, that's my prayer right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I speak to sickness and disease in the temples of the Holy Ghost and in the homes and lives of your children and your people. And even the unbeliever, Lord, heal the unbeliever so they might see your mercy and come to you and heal your people, God, because of the covenant of your blood. Lord God, you said my covenant, I'll not break me, shall I alter the things that go out of my lips. Psalms 18 and 34. And I thank you right now, Father God, that you, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13 and verses 8. And I thank you for healing your people, healing those that will believe in Jesus' name. Friend, your sickness did not come from God. It ain't came from wherever you may think it came from. It came straight from hell. It came straight from the devil. Satan's the one that makes people sick. He's the author of sickness and disease and death and destruction. Jesus is our healer just as much as he is our savior. So today I pray you be healed in Jesus name. If you believe, come on, believe with me. Lord, lay hands on yourself right now. You may have been checking your brow to see how hot it is or using the temperature gun trying to hallelujah. God, I claim right now that temperatures are being broke according to Matthew 8. Verse 14 and 15, you laid hands on Peter's mother-in-law and she was dying sick of a fever. And God, it said the fever was gone and she got up and ministered unto them. Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Fevers are breaking. Every, you know, virus in the bloodstream and wrecking havoc in the body of your people right now that watch this. I thank you for healing them. In the name of Jesus. And thank you, Lord, for healing me because I couldn't wait to have the strength to come make this little old video and pray for somebody else to be healed from what you've brought me through. And I thank you, Lord. And God, I pray for people that are elderly. I pray for people that are older that these viruses attack and it has a worse effect on them. Some of them may be watching this from the hospital. There's somebody, God, they're watching this and it's hard for them to breathe. Somebody, God, they're hurting in their chest. Somebody's head, it's feel like it's about to split in two. Lord Jesus, they're burning up. And Lord, there's some watching this. It's not only in them, it's in their children. It's in their fans. Hit their whole house at the same time and they're all sick. That makes it even worse. So Holy Spirit, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that that sickness get out of that family get out of that house get out of everybody in the name of jesus christ lord you spit on sickness because it ain't from you hallelujah we know where it comes from it comes from the devil and devil you're defeated disease you're defeated sickness you're defeated by the blood of jesus because every principality every power has been spoiled openly by jesus put to shame at the cross colossians 2 15 and i thank you lord in jesus name we are healed come on give him praise hallelujah thank you lord for healing thank you lord because healing is what jesus does satan's the one that makes sickness satan is the one behind sickness jesus he's the healer